Once again, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and children of all ages, this is the Investor Show. As always, this is your gracious host, the Prince of Investing, coming to you guys and girls live all the way from the beautiful state of Denver, Colorado. Don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, comment, and share button. And if you're catching this live, please come in and uh, let's do a roll call. Let's tell us where you're from, right? So uh, I appreciate everybody for coming in. We're going to do a roll call. We're going to have a very interesting topic today. First off, we know the market went up about 300 points. The Dow Jones itself went up 300 points today. The Fed announced another round of stimulus package of $2.3 trillion. And we're going to talk about how you can profit from that. What does that stimulus mean? All the other great stuff. But while we jump into that, as you're coming in, tell us where you're from so we can do our roll call and see who's checking us out live. So we're going to have a very good episode today. We're going to talk about the ways you can profit from the recent stimulus package. What is the stimulus package? Who's moving the market? Why is the market going up? Especially, I just forgot to mainly mention, we just had a Josh report that was two point. Uh, another 6.63. Sorry about that. Might need to get a new microphone stand. But another 6.3 million and uh, another 6.3, 6.6 million people file for jobless insurance, right? So tell me where you're at, and we're going to go through this, and we're going to go through our roll call. Very good episode, I believe, is coming up to you guys and girls. We're going to have a lot of good information. You're going to learn a lot. Hopefully you learn something. Hopefully you take away something from this. And I'm going to give you guys my thought process on investing and taking advantage of the uh, what's going on in the economy. So I will give you guys a little backdrop. In 2008, when things was happening in 2008, I couldn't process it. What I mean by I couldn't process it, I saw stimulus packages getting passed. I saw people buying stocks, selling stocks. I didn't know what was going on in the world, right? So now that uh, you know, I became way more experienced and more educated. Now we're hitting another downturn in the economy. Things are starting to make a whole lot more sense in this bear market than it did in the first bear market I ever experienced back in 2008. So we have jobless reports. We have uh, jobless claims is going up. Stock market is soaring. The question is, okay, great. All this is happening. I want to know how can I profit? So that's exactly what I'm going to teach and tell you guys and girls today. Um, this is not a political show. This is not a financial advice show. This is a financial education show. So I'm going to be here to educate you on some things so maybe you can help shape, make you a better investor, or make you reconsider some type of investments. But without further ado, at our three-minute mark, we always do our roll call to see who's checking in. So here we go. Let's first let's see who's checking in. We got Ashley Neal. Ashley, she's from the Bay, the Bay Area. She said, hey, Prince, do you have a video on how to analyze balance sheets and what to look for before investing into a company? Actually, I haven't done a uh, balance sheet video, a cash flow sheet video, but that is coming down. That is in the pikes of something I'm going to work on slowly, showing people how to analyze a balance sheet. Balance sheet, for people who don't know, this is money in the bank. The balance sheet is telling you how much money is in the bank. Then you have the income statement, which is telling you how much money is flowing into the company. Then you had a cash flow statement, which is telling you uh, how much money is coming and going, the inflow and outflow of cash. So when you invest into a company, you essentially give them your money, right? So it's just like you wouldn't give your friend of money if you if you knew they didn't have money. So you're doing if you went to a bank today and said, let me hold five thousand dollars they're going to ask you they're going to look up your credit aka when they look up your credit they're going to see how much money you have do you pay people back all that great stuff and this is how you do it the balance sheet so we're going to i'm going to definitely get into that actually we got james bond from delaware we got lh19 va is in the house how are you i'm doing pretty good today pretty excited about today's show i am warren what's up uh i am warren i think he's out there in cali he said uh, what's up, Warren from Oakland? I knew it. See, Oakland. Oh, y'all be representing hard out there in Oakland. Um, okay, Warren from Oakland, chilling in my house. Chickens in the backyard. Always good to hear your take on the market rally. Okay, we're going to get into that. Um, Athena, she said, hello, Prince, back again for another one. Thank you. Okay, we got Athena. I think Athena's out there in Georgia. She's in Atlanta. Um, Diego, hope everything is going good. We got Diego. He's coming from Argentina. We got Miss Neen from Richmond, Virginia. Okay, Miss Neen. I think this is the first time I'm seeing her. We got Kevin checking in from Facebook from, uh, I think that's Keith. We're going to say King. Last name King. He's checking in from uh, Mississippi. 
Got it? So we, we're streaming this live right now on YouTube and Facebook and for the people who are catching the playback. James Bond says 6.6 .6 million, 6.6 .6 million jobless claims were filed today. The jobs report came out. We're going to take a look. Willie Collins, what's going on? He's from my hometown down there in Georgia. What's going on? We got Georgia in the house. And Ruby is saying hi. I don't know if she's saying Hawaii or hi, but either way, nice. <laughs> we got uh, Christina. She says, hi, I'm new to investing. Is it a good idea to start investing with $5,000 on each rate, or do you have some suggestions? We're going to kind of talk about that too, uh, Christina. Okay. Who else we got here? We got Ruby from, oh, she's from Memphis, Tennessee. Proud dad. What's up, Prince? I got you on the flash stream today, and the whole family is tuned in. Proud dad. You know what? I made something exactly for you. I found the 13F, and I'm going to show it to you today on Berkshire Hathaway. So everybody's going to be able to see, instead of waiting on the media, you're going to see exactly where the media get their information from. I pulled up the 13F. I got that for you, Proud Dad, because I, I kind of felt kind of bad. It was taking me a while to find it on the li last live show. So I got it pulled up, and you're going to see it exactly. Ghost Hunter says Kansas is here. Well, I mean Kansas. <laughs> okay, we got Kansas in the house. Uh, Marcelo, hey, Prince, uh, what is your favorite investor? Who's my favorite investor? Take a wild guess who my favorite investor is, man. Everybody knows it's Warren Buffett. Come on. Come on, Marcelo. Why would you ask that? The greatest one of all time. I'm going to pick the biggest and greatest one, Warren Buffett. J-Biz, I might only trade futures for a while. <laughs> okay. Sean Stanley. Oh, what's going on? What's going on, Stanley? We got Sean Stanley House coming in from Germany. Okay, all the way from Germany. Nice, nice. Nice to see you. Uh, thank you for checking me out, Sean. I appreciate it. Max B, I know he's from New Orleans. That's my guy. He said, Prince, what do you think about grabbing some SPXS? We're going to talk about that too. Who else we got in here? He said, since we're going to, uh, since we're going on hope not numbers. That's true. B Mac, he said, what's up, Prince? Stop by driving in early to catch the show. We got Chesterfield, Virginia. Thank you, B Mac. Prince of the Big A, he said, hey, Prince, uh, when you get a chance, can you look into UCO? So that's the first request. I will look into UCO today. So we'll look into UCO a little bit later on the show. We got Anthony Grit, okay, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Uh, you are my new favorite routine. Keep up the great information. Thanks, thanks, appreciate it. Um, Moses from New Jersey, okay. Most, most, I think I said Moses from New Jersey, got it. He said, my man, and this is a Washington voice. I got you. Um, Christian, how long do you think it would take to make a living off of this? We'll get into that if people who want to make a living. I um, mean, we got Switzerland in the house. Okay. We got Switzerland in the house as well. All right. All right. That's our roll call for the day, for, this, for the beginning of the show. So now let's get right into the good stuff of why everybody tuned in. So the first thing came up, we're going to look exactly at the jobs report. 6.6 .6 million jobs were claimed, um, were filed today. Every Thursday, ladies and gentlemen, jobless claims reports come out. Why is job, why are jobless claims reports so important? Take a wild guess. Because if nobody has a job, who's going to be paying for the bills? So let's first take a look at the jobless claims. I think I got that pulled up already. Here we go. I think it's right here. Am I right? Boom. Look at this, ladies and gentlemen, right here where you're looking at. This is a news release. This is a news release here. Uh, this is the jobless claims report for COVID-19. I think it's uh, DOL that puts this out, Department of Labor. Sorry if I – yeah, that is DOL. So this is coming right from – this is what DOL said, 8.30 a.m. Thursday, Thursday, uh, April 9th. This is what they put out right here. In the week, this is their first paragraph. Y'all, sorry if I don't read that good, but, you know. We'll get, we'll get through it. But pretty much what they're saying, in the week of April 4th, the um, the advanced figure for the season adjusts initial job claims is 6.6 .6 million. It is a decrease from of 261,000 from the previous week. Um, the previous week level was reviewed by 219,000 from 6.6 .6 million. The four-week moving average was 4.2 million, an increase of 1.5 million from the previous week average so right here ladies and gentlemen this tells you i'm going to look this is what i want you guys and girls to see right here this marks the highest level of seasonal adjusted unemployment in the history 
The previous high was May 9th of 6.6, uh, 6.6 million May 9th. Everybody know, not May 9th, but May 2009. May 2009, that's when we was coming out of the last bull market. So this is the highest we've ever seen since that particular time. So unemployment, this is not unemployment number. These are jobless claims. These are people who just walked in and said, hey, I need unemployment. I got furloughed. I got laid off, whatever the case may be. So we don't get new unemployment numbers until the first Friday of May. So the first Friday of the month is when we get unemployment numbers. Unemployment is at 4.4. It was at 3.5, but it's at 4.4. The um, I believe unemployment is probably around about 10% right now, right? If, if we don't get back to work. So unemployment numbers don't come out until the first week of May. That's when we're going to be able to see all of these numbers. Unemployment is at 4.4, but that's going into March 12th. So we know that Corona didn't really, uh, we didn't start shutting down the economy until after March 12th. So unemployment was on a little rise before we even started to do the shutdown. So these numbers are going to be, I'm thinking we're going to be in double digit unemployment if we keep at this rate by the time the first Friday come around. Ladies and gentlemen, why am I showing you this? This is coming directly from the BOL. So this is come, not BOL, but the DOL, the Department of Labor Statistics. This came out exactly today. This is what the media all these people that wake up and watch CNBC, Yahoo, all this stuff like that, this is exactly where you're getting it at, right? So I want to first tell you these are the jobless claims. These are people who are claiming unemployment. Now, of course, everybody who don't claim it don't usually get it, but that's very good indicator because if people are not working, that could affect employment. If people don't have jobs, who's paying the taxes? Right. If people who if people can't pay taxes, who's going to buy the cars? Who's going to go to the movies? Who's going to eat out? Who's going to do all these type of things? Right. So anyway, that's what I want to let you guys and girls know right there with the uh, jobs report first. So the next up, what we're going to do after we just got into the jobs report, we're going to ask this question. Does. Loans help small businesses, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not the smartest guy in the world, but I wanted to ask that question. Does loans help small businesses? People sit back and ask me this question all the time. Prince, Prince, what did you do? Uh, we're going to stimulate the economy, and we're going to help out. We're going to give you a small business, right? A small business loan. Now, why do I say this? The reason why this isn't, you know, let me, I'm, I'm going to get into the good stuff. This is going to relate all the way down to why I made a particular investment today and in, to take advantage of the stimulus package. So the first question is, does loans really help small businesses? So let's say if you're a small business and you own um, a Burger King, right, uh, a sandwich shop. You own a sandwich shop. Due to the coronavirus, you know, before the coronavirus came, you were making $500 a day in your sandwich shop, right? Coronavirus hit. Now you're only making $50 a day, right? You're like, oh, my God, how am I going to pay my bills? How am I going to stay open? How am I going to keep people on payroll? How am I going to keep the lights on? How can I, how can I keep going like this uh, with uh, what you call it? With the uh, now I'm only making $50. So in the stimulus package, they come out and say, you hear the federal chair spoke today, Jerome Powell. He's the federal chair. That's like the most important figure in finance, if you don't know, because he controls the interest rates and he controls the money being pushed out of the Federal Reserve. He's the chairman, right? So he comes out and he says, hey, look, uh, you know what? To help stimulate small businesses, we're going to offer small business loans. So that means if you're a small business, if you've been hit by COVID-19, you're going to be able to get a small business loan. Now, when people see this, what do they say? They say, oh, well, great, great. You know, they're going to help out small businesses. But imagine if you was a small business and a person come to you when you're in dire need and say, hey, look, I know it's hard right now, but guess what? I'm going to loan you the money to get you through this hard time. Now, does that really help a business when you loan the money, or does that increase the expenses? Answer that simple question, right? I'm going to get into some of y'all comments as y'all kind of think about that. Where are we at? Where are we at? Okay, I want to make sure I miss. Okay, we got C. Rivera coming in from Cleveland, back in the house. All right, C. Rivera, nice to see you. Uh, hey, Prince. Joyce, hey, how you doing, Joyce? Uh, B. Max says, what's up, Stanley? Oh, yeah, yeah, Stanley. Yeah, Sean Stanley. That is, uh, remember, uh, Chief Mac from Iraq. So they're both, <laughs> that is true. 
from the BCG. Got it. Um, there we go. Making a living off of that you need big money. Okay, we'll talk about it. You could day trade. You could day trade. We're going to talk about that. Um, Lorena says, good evening. Oh, Richard Dixon, what's going on, Richard? He says, what's up? I love the material. Thank you. Um, Moses said, I brought two penny stocks with TD Ameritrade back in 2008. I didn't check my account until 2009. I recently checked my account, and both stocks were sold. Can you tell me why? Hmm. So if you, well, it could have been maybe you got to look up that company. Maybe the company disappeared. Maybe the company went bankrupt. Use that's very common in, um, with, with penny stocks. Um, the company could have been liquidated. You know, we had to look into that particular company, but that could have happened. Maybe you did something wrong with your account. Maybe let's say if you open up your TD Ameritrade account and maybe, you know, maybe the funds you put in, maybe they didn't go all the way through. Maybe you, this is what happens a lot. People put $100 into a TD Ameritrade account. They go buy a bunch of penny stocks and they forget about it. And then let's say if the money that you're supposed to transfer didn't go through. They will sell it if the account was set up wrong or something like that. So you have to log into the account and then look at your transaction history to see was it sold. And if it was sold, you got to ask that question. All right. Hopefully that kind of clears up a little bit. James Bond said China has stopped their lockdown from COVID-19. According to recent information, it's just an indicator to jump back into the more. We're going to talk all about all of that. Um, Ricky B. Okay. From Hen State. Got it. Elijah. It can help depending on how soon they pay it back, right? Elijah Jane says it could help how soon will they pay it back? Let's get let's go deeper. Let's go deeper, ladies and gentlemen. Who benefits from loans? Ask yourself who benefits from loans. Notice they didn't say they're going to give out business grants, meaning they weren't going to give away money. Right. The Federal Reserve didn't say we're going to give away money and we're going to look directly into the two point two trillion dollar stimulus package. We're going to look exactly what does this package say and we're going to see we're going to break it down further of the language of the financial language that they're speaking. And talk about how you can invest or take advantage of it. I'm not trying to beat a dead horse. I'm not trying to go slow. I'm trying to make sure everybody is tracking me, my thought process. Max B said it add more it adds more debt and we all know that's bad. Kevin said, "What's up, Prince?" Exactly, Max B. So if you're a small business, if you own the record store and you run into a hard time, and I come to you and give you a loan, a three percent loan, no matter how low the interest rate is, I have just increased your liabilities. Right now, if I gave you a grant or if I gave you a zero interest loan, different story. But if I give you the money, ladies and gentlemen, who benefits from a loan? There you go, Christian. Christian got it right. Christina got it right. Banks. Banks benefit from you, from lending money. Ghost Hunter. Banks had a penny stock fold on me today, too. Stop investing in those penny stocks. That's the most riskiest stocks out there. You're better off if you short penny stocks, but I don't want get, to get down into that. Banks benefit. Elijah said both can benefit. Yes, it can give you liquidity to get you through, through the bad times. We get that. We know anybody that gives you money is going to help you in most cases. But when it's time to pay it back, who's going to benefit? Elijah said cash is a life level business. Without cash, the business is dead. That's exactly right. Elijah, you're right. But when I lend you money, if I come to you as a financial institution, Let's say, you know, we're going to break it down. Ooh, I got a lot to get into. We're going to get into it. Proud dad, there you go. Banks benefit from loaning money. You guys and girls got it. We're on the right track now. So banks benefit from loaning people money. Notice they didn't say we're going to give Delta a grant. They didn't say we're going to give companies a love offering. They said we're going to give them a loan. So you got to ask yourself the question. Well, if they get them the loan, a loan comes with interest. Who's collecting the money on the interest? Who's going to collect the money on the interest? So if you was a small business, you don't go to the federal, you don't go to the Federal Reserve and knock on the door and say, hey, you know, I'm filling out, fill out an application for the Federal Reserve. No. 
That's not how it goes. The Federal Reserve is giving money to banks to lend to companies. The Federal Reserve is giving money to banks to lend to companies. So if I was a bank, if the Federal Reserve came to me and gave me a pile of money and I lent it out to a bunch of companies that had to pay me interest, who benefits in the transaction, ladies and gentlemen? As long as the loan get paid back. If the loan get paid, paid back, which eventually they're giving them time to do it, the loan gets paid back, who benefits from lending money to small businesses? James Gregor said, but then your business has time to recover and then pay it back. Yes, your business, yeah, that's great. We want the business. Just like when the bank gave me my car loan for me to go buy a car. I brought the car. That was great. The car helped me get to work every day. But as I'm paying back my loan, who is benefiting? The bank. And the bank didn't even put nothing up. <laughs> right? I want you all to walk with me on this. He said they could benefit, but who knows how long. Now, we're going we're gonna, to gonna get into that, Max B. Elijah, there are two types of debt, good debt and bad debt. If the debt makes you money, then it's a good debt. For the bank, it's a good debt. For the bank, it goes to accounts receivable. This is why you have to understand accounting. Accounting is the way businesses talk. Accounts receivable is money that you're supposed to get. For prime example, somebody called me and said, hey, Prince, man, I want to buy 10 of your books, right? I have to go order the books, pay for the books, send them all to the person. That money goes into accounts receivable because that money is outstanding until that person pays me, right? Just because I send them an invoice, that money hasn't hit my account. So when a bank lends money out, that goes into accounts receivable. That's money that's going to come into the bank at a later date or a later time. Now, to the business that has taken on that loan, that goes into accounts payable because you have to pay it back, right? Just because Bank of America gives me a line of credit, great. The bank is giving me a line of credit, but guess what? That line of credit comes with a 10% interest rate. CNBC, NBC, and the New York Times reported the jobless claims increased by $6 million. They all reported we are over $16 million in mixed reports. Nina, you ain't got to, you talking about what CNBC said, NBC said. I just set up and gave you the raw data. This came from the Department of Labor. I'm not going off what he said, my cousin said. But I'm telling you what the Department of Labor, I showed you exactly what the Department of Labor has done. And you can go look it up yourself at dol.gov, go to news releases, look at the press releases. That's what CNBC is getting the information from. CNBC and NBC are not out there counting uh, jobless claims. They're getting that information from the DOL. You can go to that DOL and get the exact same report, teaching you how to fish. Kevin, does it make sense to hold leverage ETFs for a year, for example, Gush? If not, and why? The only thing, um, they're very volatile. That's the only thing, right? Um, holding them for a long time. The only time I can see holding for a long time, unless you're buying the dips, you know, you got to buy the dips for uh, overtime or whatnot. And Gush, ladies and gentlemen, that is a leverage ETF on oil and gas, right? Uh, that's an, you know, that's the thing about it, Kevin. I don't want to get too deep into that, but, you know, holding them, yes, it, it will benefit, but most time to really make them beneficial for you, you got to keep buying them. Especially the dips. Ricky B. Look at Ricky B. Ricky B. A smart dude. Look at look y'all see what Ricky B. said. Invest in banks. <laughs> oh, Ricky B. is a smart one. Okay, he's catching on. Okay, I see it's getting through. Elijah said the devil is in the details and repayment terms of the loan, i.e., interest and the time frame paid back. Interest. Michael, what's going on? What's up, Prince? I brought Gush a day or so later, and I brought an email about a new perspective available. I'm not sure what uh, I'm looking at. The new perspective, when you buy Gush, the perspective is pretty much a pamphlet on what you just brought, almost like a statement telling you exactly what this is invested in, who owns what, how it operates, all that good stuff. And y'all guys and girls, we ain't got Gush. All right. Okay, Peter, he said he's out of Phoenix. Got to have to watch the playback. About to lose signal. <laughs> Pete Treef. Okay. Petrie, forever. Okay. 
Got it. Pete Tree forever. Okay, Pete Tree forever. Okay. I got you. He says he's about to lose something. We're going to have to catch the play back. So, all right, let me get back into what I was saying. So, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, let's look at the stimulus package. And when I say look at the stimulus package, we're not going to go off what somebody told us. We're not going to go off what somebody said. We're going to look directly at the federalreserve.gov website. So let's take a look. Without further ado, hopefully this works out fine. So I don't have to go about what somebody said or what I heard or whatever. All right. All right, here we go. Okay, look. What does it say? Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve System. This came out April 9th from the Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve System. Ladies and gentlemen, you can go look this up yourself. It got released April 9th at 8.30 a.m. That means it's coming out this morning. That's some old news or whatever. Federal Reserve takes additional actions to provide up to $2.3 trillion in loans. In loans to support the economy. So when I see the word loan, I already ask myself, loans are usually paid back in interest. Who's going to collect the interest? Is the federal government going to collect the interest? Is my mom going to collect the interest? Who's going to collect the interest? Hmm. First step. So, ladies and gentlemen, what is 1% of $2.3 trillion? What is 1% of $2.3 trillion? I'm going to give you guys and girls time to look at it. Look it up. I'm going to look it up myself. I want to make sure I'm correct. Ooh, that's a lot of zeros. <laughs> 10 billion. So that's 20 billion. You could say about 25 billion. 25 billion. That's 1%. Right? So, ladies and gentlemen, if you gave out $2.3 trillion worth of loan and you collected 1%, that's 25 billion in interest that's going to be collected from somewhere. Who's going to be on the front end of this? All right. The Federal Reserve, let's take a look at what they said today, ladies and gentlemen. The Federal Reserve on Thursday took additional steps to provide to provide loans to support the economy. The funding will be households and, um, and employers of all sizes to booster the government and local economies or whatever the case may be. They're pretty much saying we're going to give out two trillion dollars, two point three trillion dollars with the loans. The action of the Federal Reserve is taken to employ um, bolsters effective. Here we go, right here. Bolsters, bolsters, bolster the effectiveness of small business administration paycheck protection plans and supplying liquidity. They're supplying liquidity to protecting financial institutions through the term. Uh, backed by PPP. The PPP provides loans to small businesses. The PPP provides loans to small businesses so that they can keep workers on payroll. The Paycheck Protection Program provides liquidity and will be extended to eligible financial... Here you go. Right here, guys. The devil's in the detail. Will be extended... Will be extended credit eligible to financial institutions, to eligible financial institutions that originate PPP loans. Ladies and gentlemen, right here. This will be extended to eligible financial institutions that originate PPP loans, taking the loans to eligible collaterals at face value. Right here, ladies and gentlemen, they're telling you they're going to give the money to eligible financial institutions. I ask myself, who is an eligible financial institution? Second line, they're going to ensure cash flow to small businesses and medium-sized businesses, and they're going to purchase up to $600 billion in loans. $600 billion in loans, what they're going to purchase. So you got to ask yourself, hmm, who are the eligible institution, financial institutions, to give out PPP loans? I'm going to give you all one here today. I'm going to give y'all one here today. 
if y'all tracking with what I'm saying, what I'm saying, if I'm what I'm saying is making sense, y'all let me know if I'm making sense what I'm saying. So the federal government is going to give out $600 billion. They're going to purchase $600 billion of loans to financial institutions, to eligible financial institutions, to, to, uh, who facilitates the PPP program, which is the Payment Protection Plan, right? A program. So you got to ask yourself the question, what financial institutions are going to issue these loans? Because I know I don't go to the federal government to get the loan. Who do I go to get, to get the loan from? Let's take a look here. Let's take a look at one company here. I think I got them pulled up. Hopefully I got them pulled up. Let me make sure it's the right one. Oh, that's it. Where is it at? All right. Oh, look at this. Y'all heard of this? Oh, nope, not not yet. Not yet. I'm fine. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm not there it is. I am sharing my stream. So look at this. Look at this company. Huh. Bank of America, Business Advantage. The Small Business Association Loans and Financing Paycheck Protection Program. Apply now. The Paycheck Protection Program is created as part of the Coronavirus Relief CARES Act. They tell you guys and girls, this was created part of the Coronavirus to CARES Act in a tent to financially assist small businesses during the crisis. Now, if a small business went in here and applied for this money, do you think you're going to get that money for free? You think Bank of America is going to give you that money for free? No, they didn't give you a grant, ladies and gentlemen. They're going to give you a loan. And a loan comes with interest. So will Bank of, will Bank of America benefit from this? That's the question. What do y'all think? Will Bank of America benefit from this? <laughs> Look at Ricky B. <coughs> He's already on it. Bank of America, American's Bank, Atlantic Capital. Hmm. So, everybody's saying yes. We get a lot of... uh. He said, teaching the fish, Prince. <laughs> teaching the fish. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, I don't want to go through everybody's comments, but I'm going to get through them. I don't want to get off my soapbox here a little bit. So ask yourself that question, ladies and gentlemen. Now, this is not what somebody said. This is raw data. This is how you go from speculating to investing. So first, you ask yourself, the federal government said, we're going to give out $2.3 trillion in loans, not grants, but loans. So if you're a small business, if you want to get that loan, how do you get the money? You got to go through eligible financial institution. So eligible financial institutions are companies like what? Bank of America. So you know what? Speaking of that, let's see how the financial sector did today. Somebody down here said it today, too. James Gregory, you right. James Gregory said the financial sector did great today. The market knows the banks were <laughs> Um, will be ripping it in the next few years. Yes. Yes. Let's look at the financial sector. Let's see who performed the best today. We're, we're gonna, I'm going to share my stream. Let me pull this up. I don't have it already pulled up. I have a lot pulled up, but we're going to pull up. We're going to look at the sectors today. And not only are we going to look at who performed the best today, we're also going to see who's inside of that sector. CNBC. Now that we're on CNBC, let's go to CNBC. We can, we can use them, right? They're pretty credible. Here we go here. Ladies and gentlemen, right here. CBC. Where are we at? CNBC, okay. Now, one second. I'm just pulling up my screen. I want to share it to you guys and girls so y'all can see it too. Here we go. All righty. It's not what I wanted. Here we go. Let's look at the sectors. There we go. Huh. Let's look at the sectors today who did well. Even though we had 6.6 .6 million jobs, jobless claims, let's look at the, the sector who did well. Right? Who did the best today? Oh, look at this. 
Real estate had a good day today. Utilities had a pretty good day today. But the best day of the war goes to financial sector. The financial sector as a whole performed the best today. Went up 5.19%. Went up 5.19%. Why did it have such a great day today when the government says they're going to give out a stimulus package? So as an investor, I'm not here to say what's right. Now, guess what? The market is about to shoot up tomorrow. OPEC just came out and cut oil production. So oil is about to have a little run tomorrow. That's just news coming out today. But anyway, the financial sector had a great day today. Why did they have a great day? So as an investor, I'm going to look into the financial sector. We're going to look into the financial sector to see who's inside of that sector, right? Let's go to Yahoo Finance, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to go to, I like Yahoo Finance a little bit better. We're going to look inside of the financial sector. Let's take a look inside of the financial sector here. The entire sector is, the entire sector from the spider is called XLF, X-Ray Lima Foxtrot. So you look at this entire financial sector, you want to see who are the big dogs in this sector, the top 10 holders. Of course, you got Berkshire Hathaway, which we all know is Warren Buffett. Number two, J.P. Morgan. Number three, Bank of America. Four, Wells Fargo, Citigroup. All these companies in here. So you got Bank of America is in here. J.P. Morgan is in here today. Bank of America is in here today. All of the good stuff. So let's take a look at Bank of America. Bank of, look here, look at that. Bank of America went up 6% today. Ladies and gentlemen, they went up 6% today. Just take a wild guess why. For 25 bucks right now is what Bank of America is trading at. And it's paying a dividend. It's paying a dividend of about 2%. So let's look at Bank of America today, year to date. When the financial crisis started to take off, Bank of America went down. It was at $34. Bank of America is currently down about almost 30%. It's down about 30% at $25. So if I invest in the Bank of America and it goes back to where it was before the, the coronavirus even broke out, I would make a 30% return on investment. Let's say if it takes four, four months before it gets back there. I can collect a dividend along the way as Bank of America make its way back. Right? So with these loans, Bank of America and these other financial institutions are going to hand out. They're pretty much getting free money to hand out to everybody else, right? And collect interest on. Because when a small business goes to find, like, hey, you know what? I need some liquidity. They're going to go take out a loan, right? So look at that, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully that makes sense to y'all. Bank of America, J.P. Morgan. Paying me a dividend when all this crap clears up, I can look to easily withstand to make a 30% return on investment. Because you got to ask yourself this question, ladies and gentlemen what makes the market move? Fundamentals don't make the market move. What makes any asset move? What makes my house valued at $400,000? What makes a car valued at $30,000? Right? The car I drive is valued at about, I don't know, $1,500,000, something like that. Right? So, when you have the questions, ladies and gentlemen, you got to ask yourself the questions. Who will stands to make the most money out of everything being put down? Right? So, the financial industry is in the right position to benefit from the stimulus packages. Inside of the financial industry, you have companies like J.P. Morgan, Bank of America, who are going to withstand, who are going to benefit nicely from the stimulus packages. And these companies both pay dividends, and these companies are both down 30% discount from the price they're on. Ladies and gentlemen, what controls the market is money. 
Let's take for a prime example. The stock that had the highest return today was called United Airways, ladies and gentlemen. United Airways went up about 20% today. And I think their stock simply is UAL or some AAL, I think. Was it United? So this is what I want you guys and girls to see. What made United, what makes the stock go up 6% in a day? What makes the stock go up 6% in a day or 3% in a day or whatever? What makes a stock have a great day? What makes the stock have a great day? Um, United Airlines. Yes, United Airlines went up 14% today. How did United Airlines go up 14% in one day? The reason why United Airlines went up 14% in one day, somebody had to buy it. In order to move a stock that much, billions of dollars had to flow. So we're going to take a little look here, ladies and gentlemen. When you guys and girls are buying stocks and stuff like that, by you buying a uh, company, some people like to believe when I buy a company, I make the stock go up because I got a Robinhood account and I brought 10 shares. That does nothing in the grand scheme of things. When big money moves, that's when the stock market moves. Prince Dice go and buy $1,000 worth of United Airlines, nothing. If a private fund, if a hedge fund, JP Morgan, Berkshire Hathaway, if they decide to buy a company or sell a company, it makes the market move. What, what inflates anything, what gives anything value is what other people pay for. At the casino, what runs up the tab? What runs up everything? People's money. People put more money in. What makes the lottery swells? The lottery swells due to people putting their money in. Right? So, here we go here. Let's take a look at who owns or how the money flows into uh, American Airlines. American Airlines was the number one stock today. It went up 14%. Ladies and gentlemen, let's take a look at it. The stock went up 14%. The total number of shares, 250 shares of American Airlines is out there floating. Ladies and gentlemen, look at this. 97% of American Airlines is owned by who? Investment bankers, banks, insurance companies, pension holders, sovereignty wealth companies. 97%. These are the people that make the stock move. United Airlines, or United, I think this, I'm saying it, hopefully I'm saying it right. UAL is the stock symbol. You can see it here. 97% is owned by investment managers, right? Two percentage hope is held by brokerage firms. Only less than 1% is owned by non-institutional investors. So what makes the stock goes up is people buying it. If they feel good, that's what moves the market. So you got to follow the money, ladies and gentlemen. Where's the money going? Yes, we have the fundamentals. Yes, we have the numbers, but we have to follow the money. Big money, 97%. These investment managers decided to go out and buy American Airlines, boosting the price of the stock. You guys and girls see that? That's why this is important. Looking at ownership of a company. Now, I want to get, this is for Proud Dad. I'm sorry, Proud Dad. Warren Buffett sold off 13% of Delta. He sold off 13% of Southwest Airlines. How do you know that? When you own more than 10% of a company, you know, when you fill out that brokerage thing, they ask you if you own more than 10% of a company or if you're a director of somebody that owns 10%, you have to report everything you do. If you own more than 10% of the company, you have to report every move you make with inside of that company. If you start to buy, sell, or whatever the case may be. So right here, ladies and gentlemen, how did people know Warren Buffett brought and sold Southwest Airlines. Here it is. Hopefully I got this right. Okay, right here. 13F, form, uh, form 4. Right here it tells you Berkshire Hathaway is a company. This is their address. 
Delta Airlines, the date of the earliest transaction, the first. So April Fool's Day was the first day they started to sell Delta. It hit the news on April 4th or April 3rd because when big companies like to buy a sale, it doesn't hit right away. You know, it, it takes a while to sell. So you can see here, April 1st, Proud Dad, this is for you. April 1st is telling you they sold 3.8 million. April 1st, they sold 3.2 million. Then they sold 600,000. Then they sold on the next day 2.7 million. Then they sold 2.4 million. Then they sold 49 million on the second. It got reported on April 3rd, if I'm not mistaken on that, right? This report came out on April 3rd. This is via the SEC. So when you ask this question, hey, Prince, man, how do you know? Uh, notice, ladies and gentlemen, nowhere in here. I'm sorry about that. Let me make sure I pull, get this back up. Nowhere in here did I pull up and say, oh, somebody said what I heard. These are financial reports. Let me see if I pull it back up. Let me share it to you guys and girls again. Here we go. Here you go, Proud Dead. Chrome. Right here, look at the Edgar search results. I can't remember what the acronym for Edgar is, but you know, it's the I think it has something with. But it's a, this is the SEC's website. So right here, on April third, they put out two reports came out today. I haven't read these two reports from Berkshire came out today, but on April third, look at the documents. What happened on April third? Let's see. Let's take a look. Oh, Southwest Airlines. What, what did they do with Southwest Airlines? Let's take a look. Oh. They sold Southwest Airlines. They started selling Southwest Airlines on March 16th. They sold 6.5% shares. Right? No, that's not a sale. I can't see what that. I think that's an I. That's something different. That's, that's a different code. But on April 1st, they started. They sold 675000 Then they give you the price of what they paid. They did it on the 1st. They did it on the 2nd. And the report came out on the 3rd. So this is what the media is watching, ladies and gentlemen. Because he owns more than 10% of the company. How to fish. Nowhere in none of my reports I pulled up any media outlets or any third-party sources or what I heard, what I said. I show you guys and girls, this is from the Security Exchange Commission that you can follow. Anybody can follow. You don't need an account to follow what companies are putting out, companies that you invested in, right? Took me years to learn this, but I finally got to it. I'm going to get better. Does that help you, Proud Dad? Now, let me go down here and see what you say. See, she said, now, Proud Dad says, I got you. Thanks. Exactly. So you can see that report. That is the report in Omaha and Buffett's headquarters. His CFO, his accountant people, they sit there, and that's what they have to push out. Oh, we're going to sell Southwest. We own more than 10% of this company. They push it through the SEC. But they can't put it out until they finish selling. So that's where CNBC got it from. That's where Yahoo Finance got it from. That's where uh, Market Watch and E Trade and TD Ameritrade, Robinhood, all that little feeds they get it. That's where they got it from. But you can go to the SEC site and follow a publicly traded company. Like today, Berkshire put out two more reports. I don't know what's in them. I haven't looked at them. But that's how you can fish. Fish. I am warned that the market is closed tomorrow. The market is? What's going on tomorrow? Is tomorrow a holiday? You know? So, ladies and gentlemen, that is what I wanted you guys and girls to see. Right? Looking at the financial, looking, looking at the stimulus package, you can trace down into the stimulus package. Let's go back into that stimulus package. It's so much more. Y'all want me to go deeper? Or do y'all want me to cut it off? Because I could go a little bit further inside of there. You know, let's let, let's go a little bit deeper. I guess, you know. Right? Let's see where we're going to go. Uh, Cole Williams said, nah, let me buy your book. Where do I buy? They're children books. So anybody... My children books are uh they're everywhere from Amazon. They're ebooks, audio, paperbacks, you know, the world's first 
children's books, right? The world's first children's book series on investing, credit, and insurance. My first book was published 2015. Second one came out in 2017. Last one came out last year. The next one will be out next year, every two two years. <laughs> Jane said, go, de- go deeper. <laughs> Whitney Johnson said, educate us, go deeper. <laughs> Oh, yeah, tomorrow's Good Friday. Okay, my bad. I'm sorry about that. Mark is closed. Okay, y'all, let me go deeper. All right, let's go a little bit deeper. All right. Okay, let me get a little sip of water. We'll go a little bit deeper. So what I just did, ladies and gentlemen, I just showed you guys how the stimulus program works. The government is going to give money to banks to lend out to small businesses for a fee. What does that fee go? That fee doesn't go back to the reserve. I'm pretty sure reserve is probably going to get a little bit. But these people, these eligible eligible financial institutions are going to make money from lending these money to small businesses. So a company like Delta, a company like all these companies that are going in distress is going to need this money from the Small Business Association. And they go get this money, they're going to get charged a fee. Now, granted, that fee is going to be deferred for a year or two or three. But guess what? They're going to what you call it, right? <laughs> go, Ricky. Ricky says shovels are, <laughs> shovels ready. Okay, let's go a little bit deeper. We'll go a little bit deeper. I got a little time. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm pretty much saying, ladies and gentlemen, you got to follow the money. The money is going into the market, ladies and gentlemen. As you pay attention to the market, bonds are worthless right now. Bonds value don't have any value. We are in the lowest interest rate society we have ever seen. So if interest rates are low, that means my checking account is making nothing. My savings account, if I'm an investment manager, I can't put the money in checking. Because that's making nothing. I can't put it in savings because it's making nothing in savings because interest rates are so low. A CD is doing nothing. People are giving me their money to make a return on investment. What becomes very attractive when interest rates are low? Equities, stocks. This is the fastest fall in stocks we've ever seen. Ladies and gentlemen, what I'm saying, money is flowing into the market. Investment managers are putting money into the market. Money is flowing into the market. Yes, we have unemployment rates. Yes, we have uh, the coronavirus is going off. And I'm just, I just know when America opens back up for business, this thing is going to shoot off. So right now we're on the verge of two things. This could be the great recession or the great correction. A correction, when we fall 20%, then we snap back within two or three months. Or this could go a little bit longer. But ladies and gentlemen, by next summer, this thing is going to be at new highs. I know it. I just don't know when. But right now, I'm seeing the money flowing into the market. I've been on the sidelines looking. I'm sitting over here waiting and thinking to myself, like, man, I don't know. Uh, You know, I'm trying to wait. Let me look at the unemployment reports. Let me look at this. But I'm watching the money flow into the market. Big money is flowing into the market. So when I see the big money is going into the market, I just flow with the money and catch a little return on investment. These small companies, are buy, the, the big boys are stepping in and buying up everything. They control the market, not regular people. So let's go a little bit deeper. Mayweather uh, Financial Group says, facts, bonds show we're screwed. Yes, bonds rates are so low. You got a financial group and you're trying to make a return on investment. What asset class can you go to? Either you got real estate, stocks, business. Business and stocks and real estate go hand in hand. They're all in the same bed with each other. That's why when one goes down, the next one's going to go down. So when you got to follow the money. So guess what? This financial group, if you got $20 billion and you got to find a place to put it, where are you going to put it right now? You don't want to put it in savings. Some people are like, oh, I'm going to put it in savings. But you got to follow the money, ladies and gentlemen. Follow the money. All right, let's go a little step deep. Let's go back to, did I pull, hopefully I didn't close that tab. If not, I got to go back to it. All right, here we go. Let's see what the Federal Reserve is doing. All right. They're going to increase. We're going to go a little bit deeper. They're going to increase the flow of credit to households and business businesses through capital markets by expanding the size and scope of the primary and secondary market 
um, primary and secondary corporate credit facility, right? As well as known as asset-based securities. I'll give me one second. When lights, you know, I got lights on behind me and stuff. Sometimes they, they get the glaring in my eyes sometimes. Okay, here we go. As we know, as a term, as a term asset-backed securities loans. Oh, you never heard of that? The TAF? TAF? I'm not, I know I'm messing it up. I just heard the word TAF. Okay, whatever. Y'all get it. T-A-L-F. These three programs will be in support of six eight hundred and fifty billion and credit backed by sixty five billion. Huh. So, what is the TAF program? What does that do? What does the TLF program do? Y'all said y'all want to go deeper. Let's see what that program does. What is the TAF program? Right here, they're saying they're going to allocate eight hundred and fifty dollars in credit. Backed by 850 and 850 billion in credit protection provided by the Treasury. This is not what Prince Dyke said, ladies and gentlemen. This is what the Board of Governors for the Federal Reserve System is saying. So now you, if you're smart, you got to figure out what is TAL? What do they do? How do they tie into the financial picture? Here we go. Athena, Bank of America. That's the answer to your question. Say, you originally you said you would tell us what you brought today. What did you purchase? Bank of America. Right? I'm going to collect a dividend and I'm going to sit back and watch Bank of America take advantage of these programs. So, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Mayweather Financial Group, I got something for you too. Maybe the financial group said, yep, in other words, start a company. We're going to look at that. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Y'all want to go to deeper. $850 billion. Almost half of this is going to something called TALF. T-A-L-F. I just happen to have it written down. Okay. It's the term access, the term access-based securities. They had the actual acronym up here. I want to make sure I get the right acronym, ladies and gentlemen. Y'all give me one second. All right. Term Access Access Bat Securities Loan Facility. That's what TAF stands for. So this is how TAF works, ladies and gentlemen. When you go to buy your car, let's take, for example, I want to go out here. I want to go buy a car, ladies and gentlemen. I want to go buy a car, and it costs me when I buy a car, it don't cost more. I try to stay on ten thousand dollars when I buy a car, right? That way, everybody thinks that I'm poor. They never ask me for nothing. <laughs> so anyway, I go to buy a car for ten thousand dollars, a used car, obviously. I go in there. I don't have the ten thousand dollars. I look to go get a loan. When I go get that loan, that loan comes from a finance company. That finance company could be, let's say, Bank of America. So Bank of America doesn't take that. They give me the loan. If I'm approved, they give me the loan. But you got to ask yourself, where does Bank of America get their money from? Right? How Bank of America get their money from, they take these loans. They charge you 4% interest, whatever the case may be. They break them down, and they call them into something called ABS, Asset-Based Securities. They take this, and they sell them to investors. Now, I haven't figured out yet. I haven't seen it yet. What's the return on investment for investors? But investors buy these loans from banks. So the bank go into you and say, hey, look, I got these loans. I got uh, this Prince Dice came in today. He said that he wanted to buy uh, a $10,000 loan, and he's going to pay 4% for the loan, right? So I'm guessing what has to happen, the financial company has to sell the loan to, uh, sell the, loan to the investor maybe for 2%, right? So the investor looks at it and say, oh, I'm going to buy Prince Dice loan and I'm going to earn, I don't know, 4% or whatever the case may be, maybe 3%, maybe 4%. So it's a nice return on investment as long as I pay my loan. So when they give the bank the money, when they buy the loan from the bank, the bank takes the money and gives it to the, uh, the bank takes the loan, gives the money to me. I go off and buy the car. When I buy the car, I give the money to Ford or whoever else I'm buying it from, dude off the street or whatnot. Great program, right? 
this program came in in 2008 when the whole financial system marked a crash. What happened, as investors started to lose money, investors stopped buying ABSs. When they, started, when they stopped buying ABSs, the banks didn't have money to loan the people. When the people didn't have money to loan, those small business loans, those cars, your credit cards, you know your credit card that you're paying 10% for? Somebody probably brought it from an ABS, right? So when the bank gets this money, uh, when the bank sells these ABSs, they get the money from um, the investors. They take that. That's how they create credit cards. It overcharges. I mean, they don't overcharge. They're making a profit. It's just they're wholesaling and retail. Same concept. So they take these loans. They sell them to us, right? So in 2008, what happened, investors stopped buying ABSs. When they stopped buying ABSs, banks didn't have money to lend to people. Banks didn't have money to lend to people. People couldn't go buy cars. People couldn't go get student loans. People couldn't start businesses. Everything crashed. Everything was blocked, right? Everything was on freeze. So me as a regular person, I couldn't get a car loan. The banks, they didn't have the cash. Investors, they were losing money, so they didn't back it up. In comes the program called TELF. The term asset, you know, you all heard me say TELF, right? T-A-L-F. They come in. What happens is when they come in, they give the money to everybody else, right? They come in, they're the insurance. What they do is they give a loan to the investor. So the investors, the sophisticated investors can go back and buy ABSs. When they buy these asset-backed securities, this in turn give money to financial companies to be able to loan to everyday people. This restored confidence into the financial system so that if, even if the investor don't have the money, they can go to TALF and borrow money if they got the collaterals or whatnot. They can say, hey, TALF, you know, I'm, I'm messed up right now, but I do have this land. I do have this. They can put up whatever they have for collateral, borrow the money from TALF to purchase ABSs. And when they purchase these ABSs, that's what the banks use to fund everything that runs the economy. Does that make sense? So when the government comes out and put a trillion dollars into the TELF program, who benefits? Who profits from the government funding the TELF program? Ladies and gentlemen, don't take my word for it. I just told you what the federal government said they do. You can go look up and see what the TELF is and how they run. Right? Now people say, Prince, let's go a little bit deeper. Y'all want to go deeper, so we're going we gonna, to we gonna do it, right? We're going to go into it. All right, where we, where we at? I'm trying to find my next page. Y'all give me one second. I want to read it to you. So we heard somebody make the comment earlier. I think it came from uh, Mayweather Financial Group. All right, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. I want to get back to your question. I, I'm trying to find it. I'm trying to find what Mayweather Group, he said, start a business or something, right? I can't find your comment, Mayweather Productions. But he came in and said, hey, start a business so you can take advantage of the what you call this, right? So here we go. We're going to take a look at it. Here we go. Federal Reserve Board. All right, I highlighted it right here. So you think you're going to start a business and be able to get this money, right? So right here in the second paragraph or the third, whatever paragraph it is, the Main Street Lending Program will enhance support for small and mid-sized businesses that were in good financial standing before the crisis. You have to, this is for small and mid-sized businesses that were in good Financial standing before the crisis. So if you went out there and got an LLC slid in your drawer and just say, hey, let me go get a bunch of money, it's not for you. Because they want you to already be good in financial standing. You was doing good before the crisis was going. If you was already doing cra crappy, if you was doing crappy before the financial crisis, they don't even look at helping you with this money. 
Remember when I was saying when I was looking at companies to invest in, I said, if you was doing crappy when everybody else was doing good, I'm not even looking to put my money there, right? This is the same thing the Federal Reserve is saying. This is not me saying it. It says the Main Street Lending Program will enhance support for small and mid-sized businesses that were in good financial standings before the crisis. By offering four-year loans, by offering four-year loans to companies employing up to 10,000 workers or with a revenue less than $2.5 billion. So these are four-year loans, not grants. They're not giving away money. So they're like, hey, if you was a good company that was doing well, that employed a good bit of people, that you was doing well, you got your tax statements, you got all your P&L statements that show you was doing well before this hit, then no. Uh, we're going to help you out. But if you're coming up now and trying to take advantage or something like that, no. Here you go right here, ladies and gentlemen. It tells you right here. Eligible banks may originate new street loans. So pretty much they're telling you eligible banks can give out these loans to these companies. So I had to look up who were the eligible banks. And I found out Bank of America was one of them. That's why you think the financial industry jumped up today. That's like the government giving me a bunch of money and telling me, hey, Prince, you can loan this to people in distress for a fee while they're in distress. Okay. I ain't paid nothing for the money. What's, where's my risk? Whitney Johnson says, oh, wow. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is nothing that Prince Dykes is saying. This is from the Federal Reserve's website. Everything I'm pulling up, y'all notice everything I came from, it came from the SEC, it came from the Federal Reserve, um, it came from all financial, you know, the raw data. So I always tell you guys, you have raw data and you have filtered data. Raw data is like me, like me listening to your phone conversation. That's raw data. I'm listening to your phone conversation, right? But if I hang up the phone and be like, ooh, I heard something. I, I, I listened to your phone conversation for an hour. I hang it up. Then I write a report on what I heard in your phone conversation. I write a report on it. And I publish it. Now it's sanitized. Right? I'm teaching you guys how to listen to the phone conversation. What I'm going is, hey, this is what the phone conversation is. Interpret it yourself. Because when I hear it, I put my spin on it. I put out what I think is important. And this is what you're seeing on CNBC, Yahoo Finance, Market Watch. Great people, by the way. They do a great job. But I'm showing you guys and girls. So when y'all see, well, who is this dude on YouTube, Facebook, iHeartRadio? How have you catching me across the globe? Who is this goofy guy talking about this or that? I'm just showing you guys and girls the data. Right? I think that's a little bit, I think it's a little bit uh deep enough for you guys and girls. So I'm gonna do a couple stock reviews. We're going to look at UCO. I think that was BMAC. That, that's the first one that I saw was UCO. So let's take a look at UCO and see what UCO is and what it's all about. All right. We're going to take a look at this together. I'm going to share my screen here. Y'all give me a second. Somebody asked in the comments, Prince, can you take a look at UCO? Let me go back and pull that up. Where is that comment? I appreciate everybody that's tuning in. Um, I hope you guys and girls are getting something out of this uh, from – all y'all that come in and tune in and stuff like that or whatnot. Hope y'all getting some out of this and hopefully it makes sense. Okay, I'm trying to find. I think that was B Mac that asked me that. So I'm going, it's no particular order. I'm going into who asked first. Right? We're going to get into that LK Raw. I see what LK Raw is saying. She's saying, the Fed support is throwing off my trading strategies. I'm so discombobulated that I think that we're back in a bull market. This seems more like a EOY 2018-2008 crash. So the Fed, like I said, I go with the money. And I believe there's going to be another crash, right? I believe, I really do believe there's going to be another 
uh, crash after the stimulus. But Jerome Powell, the favorite reserves chair, this man is aggressive with writing checks. He's aggressive. He's just dis- he's determined not to fail. So he is giving banks, hey, just is giving the money. Give the, you know, it's just a free fall right now. But what I think, uh, it wasn't it wasn't B Man to ask that question. Okay, I'm sorry about that. But yeah, so you got to follow the money, ladies and gentlemen. And when when the money is moving, you got to move with it, right? You know, I don't go against the herd. But now, granted, LK Raw, how you can position yourself, make majority of your portfolio cater to the bull, but set a little bit aside to cater to the bear, right? We're going to go up in the long run. The bull is going to be right in the long run. We just don't know when. Maybe we may go down again. So I have set up in my portfolio, hey, if we do take another dip, I take a profit, right? But if we do run off and go to the moon from here, I will win anyway. I will lose a little bit, but I, it's the money that I have, the SPX, Max B was asking about this, the SPX that I have is so small and minuscule, right? It's so small and minuscule that if the market was to take a downturn, I mean, if the market was to run off and I was to lose everything that was in it, I really won't be affected. Because right now you got to ask yourself, LK Raw, are we in the Great Recession? This is going to be next week's show. Are we in a great recession or are we in a great correction? But I can't find who said it. Um, so let's jump into it. Let's jump into the next company. Because I know what you're saying. Unemployment is rising. Um, just telling you guys and girls, when we get this corona thing figured out, we're going to the moon. We are going to the moon. Big money is coming into the market. Big money is pushing the market. Equities are becoming... Everybody around the world is jumping in the stocks. They're interested in the stocks, right? But when you're on the bear side, put a little money to the side. But I would say if you're sitting on the sideline, if you're waiting, trying to find a time or whatnot, I would get in the game. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry to tell you, but you got to get into the game. Even though we see unemployment numbers, even though we see the market could go into a bear market, but the likelihood of you timing this thing perfectly and getting in on time and catching that train, you know what? I'd rather be I'd rather be early on the train than to be late. If I'm early and we take another dip, I buy some more. But if the train, you know, do I want to be at a train two hours early? Do I want to be sitting on the subway two hours before the train take off? Or do I want to go ahead and just wait on the train now? So I was sitting on the side of the railroad. I'm like, you know what? Let me just get, go ahead and get my seat. Just, in, just so I don't miss this ride, right? Then versus me sitting on the sideline and train take off and I'm running down the street trying to catch it. I know it's a dumb analogy, but it kind of makes sense. So let's do this. Let's look into UCO. Okay. Crude oil, pro shares. This seems like a leverage ETF. Is this a bullish ETF or a bearish ETF? It seems bullish. If I was to look at this, for everybody that who got Gush, Gush is up 6%. I would rather go with Gush than the UCO. That's me. Gush is $24. For everybody who got Gush, you're catching a dividend. Look at that dividend yield. Oh, my goodness. That's crazy. So you're catching a good dividend yield on that Gush. And then they just cut oil production. Oil is going to have a good day tomorrow. So everybody that got Gush, congratulations. (laughs) <laughs> you're going to have a nice day tomorrow. But instead of the UCL, I already look at that. That's the power shares. I would go with Gush. Even though it's $2 right now, uh, let's take a look back at the, the – it looks like a, something that's a bullish – it seems like a bullish uh, – that's ridiculous. Then you went down a day. Why did you go down a day? Pro shares, ultimate brute. No. It seems like an ETF for crude oil, right? Um, an ETF that's, crash, that's tracking um, – I look at it, it's no dividend that's being paid there. You can only make money if it goes up. Um, 
yes, it's two dollars. That's great because it's cheap to get into, but cheap is not always good. I would go with the Gush. Look at the Gush. Look up Gush. Whoever asked me that question about UCO, look up G U S H. It's performing better. So why track oil? If I'm going to get in the oil business, I want to make a return. I go with the Gush, even though that's not really my thing. I'm not an oil guy, but with Gush, you get oil and energy. I like Gush better. This one. So I'm not an oil person, but that would, I would I would stay away from this one. I'm not getting a dividend. I only can make money when it goes up or whatnot. Um, let's see. How much is it down so far this year? Okay, so it was at 19 bucks. So it's down a good bit. That's nice. But uh, no, I, I wouldn't do this. I mean, I wouldn't do UCO. That's just my take. Look at he said, I brought a hundred shares of Gush yesterday. You're gonna have a good day tomorrow. Congratulations. I guess he said with people who do options, they use UCO for some reason. Well, now if you use it for options, it could be the Greek symbols. I just did a video called the Greek symbols. It could move very well with the Greek symbols. Right? Um, Palm Bay Financial Group. I don't know who that is, James, but I hear you. I think you're talking to somebody else. Oh, price of Big A asked for you. Okay. Yeah, okay. But I hopefully, hope that makes sense. I wouldn't do uh, – that's just me. Now, if you're trading options on it, that could be different because you could be looking at the Greek symbols. But um, that would be something I wouldn't do. But, ladies and gentlemen, follow the money. The money is coming in. I want to see who's going to benefit from these stimulus packages. And when I look at it, there's no, by, no mistake the financial industry went up. They're giving out loans. They're not giving out grants. They're not just printing money to give it away. They're going to make a return on investment. They're going to make billions and billions and billions of dollars just on interest in the future. They're going to print up a bunch of money, loan it to a bunch of people in distress. Even if they gave it to them 1%, 1% on $2.3 trillion, that's like $25 billion they're going to make back off of money they just printed. The Federal Reserve is not giving out the money. They're going to give it to banks and institutions to facilitate. J.P. Morgan, Bank of America, they're going to give them the money to loan the people in distress. So they're going to be like, oh, Prince, we're so sorry. Your business is having a hard time. We're here to help you in your need. We're going to give you a low. Go to the SBA website. The SBA website, they're not even, that's a small business association. Nowhere on their website you see anything about, we're going to give you out a grant. They do offer grants. But most of what they're giving out is loans. Even the Federal Reserve said they're going to give out $2 trillion in loans. Harloon Financials, you're saying, is there any way that you can see in real time immediate transactions of big hedge funds? No, unless that hedge fund is publicly traded and unless that hedge fund owns about 10% uh, more of the company. If they're publicly traded, like you can see what Berkshire Hathaway holds because they're a publicly traded company. But Subway is not a publicly traded company, so you can't look into their finances. Just like I can't look into Harloon Financials because you're private. But if you was to go to the public, you're asking for money from the public, you become a publicly traded company, and you own more than 10% of a company, you have to become an open book. So if somebody in a private hedge fund, they can buy and sell and do what they want to do behind the scenes. Athena said... I'm going to look at see. I think she's asking me, was it a one-time purchase of Bank of America, or was it a was it a one-time purchase? I look at it. I'm going to look. I'm going to follow it. Right. If I see a better, if we take another market dive, yes, of course I'm going to buy more. But I'm going to follow it. But I looked at it and I said, that's a buy button. Why did you think the whole financial industry go up, went up? Majority of Bank of America stock is owned by hedge funds, investment managers. Why did they put a bunch of money going into the financial industry? Why did everybody run to the financial industry? Because when you look at majority and the bulk of that stimulus money is going to benefit the financial industry more than everybody else. Yes, it's going to help small businesses get the liquidity, but those banks are going to benefit from that. James Gregory, yes, the Small Business Association. When we just went on to the, you know, go to the, SBA, Small Business Association, they're not even handing out, they're not handing out grants, they're handing out loans. 
companies can go in there and find and figure out a loan, right? They can go uh, buy a low interest loan. And even who's connected to the Small Business Association, Bank of America. We just saw it on their website. That's not what I said. Let's look at it. See if I still got it in my um in my tab. Right here, ladies and gentlemen, you brought up the Small Business Association. Small, he go to Small Business Association Loans and Financing. Paycheck Protection Plan. Apply now. Help you get through the pandemic. We're going to help you get some liquidity for a small fee. <laughs> I'm not saying it's fair. I'm 35 years old. I don't have time to fix everything. I'm just here to try to benefit from what I can and help my life out. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's the way I look at it. And the reason why I said Bank of America because it's more affordable than J.P. Morgan. J.P. Morgan is even better. But just keep an eye on that financial industry. I'm telling you, watch. Guess who owns majority of the shares? I'm not going to tell y'all. I'm not going to tell y'all. Here we go. Here we go. We're going to pull it up. Well, I don't have it pulled up already, but majority of the shareholders for uh, Bank of America is Warren Buffett. Back in 2008, when the stimulus package came out, Warren Buffett was buying a crap ton of Bank of America when it was like five, six dollars. I mean, Bank of America was doing horrible. I was like, they about to go bankrupt. Why is this guy buying all this Bank of America? Because they got a stimulus plan. And I didn't know what stimulus was. Look at the stimulus packages. The Secretary of Treasury back then, 2008, was Henry Paulson. Henry Paulson, he just gave the money to the banks. The banks made interest on the money, and the banks lended the money for people to for a fee. So Bank of America was almost on the brink of bankruptcy in the last financial crisis. It was in the single digits, like 5 or $6 or whatever. And I was wondering, well, why would people buy Bank of America? They're about to go bankrupt. I didn't understand how a stimulus package worked and who was going to benefit. Right? He said the government would never, yeah, you know, he said the gov, Max B said the government would never let the banks fall, Ricky. I said, right, invest in them. So guess what? I'm going to collect the dividend, Athena. You asked me if I'm going to hold it one time. I'm going to collect the dividend on Bank of America every month. So say if we do go for the next six months, I'm going to collect the dividend. If it goes back to where it was, if it goes back to $35, I'm probably going to stand and make somewhere between about 30-something percent. From sitting and waiting. 37%? Is that a life changing percentage? No, but it's better than what I'm getting in my bank. It's better than what I'm getting on a bond. It's better than what I'm getting in real estate at this current moment. So why not? They're benefiting from others' pains, and the government is backing it. That's my thought process. But, ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna, we're going to get into some comments. I'm going to wrap up today's show. I hope you guys and girls took something away from that. Um, all this information. Um, the, the resources that I use, we use um, the Federal Reserve website, Federal Reserve, I can't remember the website, but I'm, you know, Federal, I'm giving it to you. The Federal Reserve website is where the information came from. Um, that's the federalreserve.gov. So you can go to the federalreserve.gov, right? Also, we also pulled information from, we use uh, federalreserve.gov. And who else, who else do we pull up today? Um SEC, SEC.gov. That's where we pulled up the uh, financial reports or whatnot. So I hope that's uh I hope today's episode was helpful. Man, my mouth is dry. All right, here you go. Let's look at this question. GR said, does bank does Berkshire know something the public doesn't know about? Do we have inside information on Southwest Airlines? So think about it. Yes, they sold some software airlines, but they sold, compared to what they still hold, it was a small piece. They sold a small piece of software, Southwest Airlines, but they still got a big, big chunk. So they sold a couple million in Southwest Airlines, but they still got billions tied up into it. So they didn't liquidate, they, they didn't get rid of it, but they just sold some, and they kept the rest. Right? LK Raw, get with the game. Why you don't buy cover calls, right? Cover calls. We'll do cover calls later on another time. Do cover calls. You can buy the stock, then sell a call on it. If the stock doesn't go up, like if you got this and the stock doesn't go up, 
you collect the premium. If the stock does go up, you collect the, what the stock went up on and the premium. Sell a cup of call. You can do that to be making money. I don't even want to get into that whole thing about making money. I know somebody asked about that, but I want to get what I had to sell my chest. LK Ross said, I wanted to buy Bank of America at that time, but I was too poor to do it. I had the money to do it, but I didn't know what was going on. I remember Bank of America was at $7. It was at $9. I was like, and but all the news was bad. Bank of America may go bankrupt. Bank of America, you know, the financial industry is under the ground. I just thought, oh, man, it's the end of the world. But now I look at it today. I did get it around about 20 bucks, 18, 20 bucks. And I wrote it all the way up to 30. Then I sold it off, luckily, right before all this started to happen. Now back on the train. <laughs> Gary Wallace said, another great video. Appreciate it, appreciate it. Ashley said, is J.P. Morgan Chase a good ETF to buy? Which J.P. Morgan Chase ETF are you talking about? J.P. Morgan Bank? I mean, the bank itself? Yes. Everybody knows J.P. Morgan is on sale. And it's going to benefit from all these crises. James Gregory said the SEC. Yes, we was on the SEC website. That's where we was at. Uh, Christina said, is E-Trade a good company to go with for self-directed trading or is it something? I like TD Ameritrade, E-Trade. Those are my top two guys. They are, they are owned by Charles Schwab and Morgan Stanley, but TD Ameritrade, E-Trade is my top two. I dabble with Robinhood, but why? There's really no need. Proud Dad said, I missed about 20 minutes, Prince. The wife had me installed the ring, the doorbell ring. <laughs> what stocks did you buy? <laughs> Bank of America. That was the answer today. Bank of America was the answer today, ladies and gentlemen. So um, I brought it, and I think the stock was up about 4% when I brought it, but it went up to 6% at the end of the day. It's going to cool off. You'll probably get a better price, but it's a nice dividend paying stock. It's in a perfect position to, to uh, benefit from the stimulus. Um, they're getting money from the government to lend to people during a hard time. Sad to say, but it's true. Silver Lion says, should he buy Gush tomorrow? Should have bought it today or when I told you about it. <laughs> but I mean, um, um, tomorrow, if you're alone, if you believe in oil and energy in the long run, yes. Gush, it's going to be too late. By the time you get up tomorrow, the price is going to be inflated. Oil look like it's going to, so far, it looks like it's going to be doing good tomorrow. Well, market's closed tomorrow. I'm sorry. Well, you don't even know what's going to happen over the weekend. So, <laughs> but it does look like it. Yeah, market's closed now and it's going to be closed tomorrow. And so you probably won't better get into Monday. But right now, this is doing good in the aftermarket. We'll see what it transitions. True, two trillion equals inflation. That is true. Also, oh, I forgot another one. So y'all stayed this late. Y'all got another one. Gold. As we pump all this money into the economy, the dollar value will go down and gold value will go up. Gold had a very good day. And I told people you can get into gold for IAU, India Alpha Umbrella Unicorn. Well, you know, for all my military people. So IAU, you can get into gold. That's the ETF. I think it's about 15, 16 bucks. Um, as we pump all this money and the Fed is ready to go for another round and Jerome Powell is making sure this ain't going to happen on his watch. Trump trying to make sure this market is back up before the election. And as we pump more money, gold will go up. Right again, it says sell. I don't know what you're talking about. Yes, SPX, I will hold some. Um, I will hold some as my insurance policy, but I wouldn't go crazy. I think the market is going to crash, but right now this money is flowing right now. I think we, but I think we are going to take advantage of the next dip. I think we're going to see another dip. It's all about what pattern. We already March twenty third. We hit our so far our bottom. Now we could have a V shape where a V shape market goes down and comes right back up. A V. We could have a W, where the market goes down, hits hits the bottom, come up a little bit, hit the bottom again. And then it takes off. That's a classic bottom or whatnot. Or upside down head and shoulders. But I think we're going to see one more dip. I think we're going to see one more dip.
and that XPX can, but I won't go too crazy. I would get a little bit just like you buy insurance, but I will be heavier on the bull side. I'll be heavier on the XPXL, the TQQQ, the tech, you know, all the stuff I gave you guys. I'll be heavier on them, but I would get a little bit of that XPX because guess what? I'm long term. If we do turn downturn, I do have XPX in my portfolio. I'm going to sell them off. And I'm going to get some more equities. Jerome Powell is a straight gangster with that checkbook. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, let me go ahead and get out of here. Okay, let me ask one last question. Prince, I've been waiting for a red day to buy, man, all week. Now, I've been waiting, too. I've been waiting on the big big drop. It's coming. It is coming. It has to come. It's going to come. I've been waiting on it. I've just been watching the market just go. I'm like, man, come on. Would you please drop? I'll wait on that for sale sign. I'm right there with you, Kevin. I've been waiting, too. Harlan said, what does it make you think we're going to see another dip with all the bad news already out and factored into the market? Well, this is why. Because it takes a t- it takes time. It takes time for the market to catch up with fundamentals. Sometimes technicals can get away from fundamentals, Harlan. So right now, like a company could be, like, let's say, take a bad person. Say, you, you ever see a bad person start to do so well? Or a thief. Let's take a thief, all right? Let's say a thief, he comes up, he breaks into people's houses while they're at work, and he's stealing stuff, and he sells it to a pawn shop, and he's making $3,000 a day off of just breaking into people's houses, right? You don't do that because you know that's wrong. You're like, man, he's breaking into people's houses. He's eventually going to get caught. He may get away with it for a day, a month, two days, three days, a year, two years, three years, but eventually it's going to catch up with him. And when he catches up with him, he's going to go to prison. That's how I look at the market right now. With all the bad news, with unemployment rising, with the coronavirus capping up, uh, uh, with companies not um, companies not making a profit, people getting laid off, who's going to pay the taxes, the economy shut down. With all that bad news, I feel as though it's going to catch up with us eventually. But in the meanwhile, right now, if we get these doors open and we get back into business by May, man, we're going to go to the moon. Okay, I got to get out of here now. I got to get out of here. Also, the market is going to be open, but it's going to close at 2 p.m. All right, last question. Ms. Cole Williams said, what is a good amount of shares to buy Bank of America? It depends on your portfolio. If Do you got $5, $5,000, $500,000, $5 million? It depends on how big your portfolio is. But I added to some portfolios, and guess what? You're going to make you're going to make pretty good money, right? Oh, somebody just texted me and said, hey, Prince, uh, just brought your book. Okay, appreciate it. Uh, but anyway, yeah, you're going to make some money. It all depends on how, how big your portfolio is. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I'm out of here. Until the next video podcast, thank you for tuning in, everybody around there. Until the next video podcast, cartoon, or whatever else crazy you see me do around the globe, peace, be safe, I'm out, and thank you.